Well, our next story is one of bravery and survival. Valeska Paris spent three decades living inside the confines of the Church of Scientology. Born into the church, she spent her childhood in a home for young recruits where she claimed she suffered abuse. At the impressionable age of 14, she signed a billion-year contract with the church and in her years on the notorious Free Winds cruise liner, she worked under conditions she describes as harsh physical labour. At 32 years of age, Valeska fled the organisation to create a better life for her family. Now, the mum of three is on a mission to speak out, sharing her story with the world to reveal what really happens behind closed doors. And Valeska Paris joins us from Brisbane this morning. Uh, hi Valeska. So you were born in Switzerland but when your parents divorced your father joined the Sea Org. You went uh, to live in a home for children of Sea Org members. So what was that like? Well so when I was six and my sister was four and my brother was two we were taken on a plane to England and we ended up at St. Hill and my mum was there and she was basically escorted by two men in grey um, away from us and we were put on this old bus and taken to this run-down mansion and we were basically put in dormitories, the living conditions were horrendous, the food was terrible, um, most of the windows at that house were broken so we were cold all the time. And if we showed any emotion whatsoever, like for missing my mum, we were yelled at. Emotions were not allowed to be shown. And then my dad started working in a Sea Org on um, like a 16 to 18 hour schedule, so we didn't even see my dad. We had nannies look after us and they hated their jobs because looking after the cadets was the most degrading job you could do in a Sea Org. So we had physical abuse, we had sexual abuse. We had a couple of pedophiles that were put to look after the kids and we had mental abuse. And just so we're clear, the Sea Org is sort of a, a section of the Scientology, it's an arm of the Scientology. Is that how you would describe it so we know what the Sea Org actually means? So I think the best way to compare it is like if you go into the Catholic Church you have members of the Catholic Church and then you have people that are priests yeah. and they work full-time for the Catholic Church so the Sea Org is like that where you're uh, completely segregated from the rest of the world. You live in what they called Sea Org Burving, so we were in dormitories. Um, like the pay for Sea Org members is $50 a week if they're lucky and your food and uh, rooms get paid for but it's like really bad food and really bad living conditions. Right. And your parents know per Hubbard policy, Alvon Hubbard who started Scientology, as a cadet, your parents do not have the right to be your parents. It, you are basically a future Sea Org member and you're being groomed to be a Sea Org member. And we were treated like we were in the way. Uh, if you are upset about something, you can't go to your father about it. You can't go to your parents about it. You can't show any emotion. Also, per um, Hubbard policy, a child is a grown-up in a little body. So you're not treated like a child. You're treated like an adult. Mm. Uh, you say you signed a billion-year contract with the Sea Org as a teenager. So just explain those contracts. So um, basically, Hubbard believes that you live more than once. So you live lifetime after lifetime. So the billion-year contract is you're not just dedicating yourself to the Sea Org for this lifetime, you're dedicating yourself for a billion years. So you're supposed to, when you die, you're supposed to come back. So I first signed that at six years old in the Cadet Org, and then again at 14. Wow. Right. Now, you, you say that the media has a focus on the big stars uh, like Tom Cruise, who are members of Scientology. But how different is their experience to those like yourself who are in Sea Org? Well, celebrities are treated like royalty, especially Tom Cruise, and Sea Org members are treated like slaves. So, and for me, like the worst is cadets and children because we were born into it, or you know, some of us were brought into it as young children, and you don't have a choice. It's this is your life, and this is what you're going to do, and you're completely cut off from the outside world, so you don't know anything else. You often hear of the struggles of people when they realise that they want to get out. Getting out is very difficult. When did that realisation come to you and how difficult was that process? 
Well, as a child, like as a child in the sea, or like starting very young, because I was a cadet, you you feel like you're worthless. Um, there is no such thing as unconditional love because you know that if you cross from the age of six years old, I knew that if I crossed Scientology or I did anything that would get me kicked out of Scientology, that I would lose my parents. Scientology comes first, so. That's like the most damaging thing that happens as a child is you feel unloved, you feel unwanted, and you feel like there is no such thing as unconditional love. And how did you get out? So I, I joined the Sea Org, right? And um, I believed because I was brainwashed that Scientology and the Sea Org was the only thing that was going to save my mankind. So. I went through a lot of abuse. I, I was sexually abused. I was physically abused. I was mentally abused. But in 2007, I got in trouble for something that in the real world is really stupid, but in the Sea Org was a big deal. And I was escorted from my room on the ship and um, brought to a room with a camera in front of the door. I was put under 24-hour watch. Um, at that time, we were also getting an average of two hours sleep a night, so I was exhausted. Um, I was getting yelled at every day. I was put in the engine room to work in the engine room full time for three months straight. I was not allowed to talk to anybody else. I had to eat my meals, 15 minute meal breaks in the boiler room. And I had to work like you have to go under the, the decks in the mm -hmm. engine room. You don't have any protection. And in these claustrophobic um, conditions, you have to clean bilge oil. So I was doing this every day for three months, and at the end of the day, you have to clean yourself with diesel. And I just got to a point where I didn't care about, you know, the purpose of Scientology and saving mankind. It, I was just so miserable that I was like, I just wanted to kill myself, basically. And I ended up finding a metal razor in the engine room, and I put it to my wrist, because I also thought that I would come back. And then I thought about my sister. And I was like, well, I haven't spoken to my sister for like 12 years because I was forced to disconnect from her. And maybe she will let me back into her life. I don't know where she is. I don't know what she's doing. But maybe I'll be able to go with her. And that was the thing that stopped me from killing myself. So if you could get a message to your family, what would you say now? Well, OK, so when I was 17, I was forced to disconnect from my mum because she uh, talked bad about Scientology and was excommunicated. At 20 years old, I was forced to disconnect from my sister because she spoke to my mum. And then when I came out of, finally got out of the Sea Org in 2009, I reconnected with my mum and sister. And in 2010, two weeks before my... Um, first son was born, my father and my brother and my stepmom disconnected from me and I haven't heard from them since. And what I would say to them, which I know they won't know because they're not allowed to watch anything that's negative about Scientology, but uh, my door will always be open for them and I hope that they wake up and if they do, that I'll let them back into my life. Mm. Well, Valeska, thanks so much for sharing your story. Uh, we thank you for joining us this morning on The Morning Show. It's a very powerful story. Mm. Valeska Paris, thank you.